I'm going to show you how to set up Dashbook for the music industry. So basically tracks and albums. Rather than use the wizard, I'm going to get out of that right now and go directly to a setup of products and types to change it from the default of books to tracks and we'll just say yes that we're going to get rid of the product there and albums. We don't need chords so we'll get rid of that. We can always add more later. Now that we have that set up, we could choose the menu for data and get into orders and products and royalty agreements. We're just going to use the button because I like it. We're going to get rid of these miscellaneous that the program started off with. We won't need it. We're going to create our own product. It says new from ISBN. If you were in the book industry and you had ISBNs, you can list them all here and Dashbook would fetch the information for you. It's wonderful. But if we skip it, we can do the manual work. So we're going to set up an album and we're just going to use the SKU. Uh, right now I'm going to start setting up the tracks. We're just going to put two tracks on there. And we, you can put the ISRC in for the track and you can also put more than one value for each of these product codes, which is very useful if your different vendors and distributors have their own code for your product. You can match them up in the sales report. So we have a T1. That's going to be my track one. And it is going to be individually sold. And this is going to be non-stocking because we don't want to deal with inventory on this. It's tracks, 99 cents. Now we're going to put a royalty agreement on the track level instead of the album level. And this one, we see we have no author or contributors here. So we're going to go into the show authors and create an author or a contributor to this. So we'll have an artist one. We can get the address information and all the royalty details, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Create an artist one and an artist two. And now we have those. So we can say we have an artist. You know what? Let's just put them in order. So we have artist one and then artist two. The role is not going to be important, but um, you know you could choose that it's an artist or a composer, etc. Components are what we're going to use to connect the tracks to the album. So we're not going to deal with it on the tracks, but on the album itself we'll have components of these tracks. Royalties, it says to create an agreement, apply changes first, so we can know the authors. Now when we create a royalty, we're going to leave this one as specific single author and title. You can actually unclick this and make a single royalty agreement that you use multiple times, or you can have multiple of these generics, but we're not going to do that now. Let's say that we have uh, this one we're going to pay a mechanical royalty on, and we're going to give this artist 50% uh, of the mechanical royalty. And now you see we have artist one and artist two, and now we have author one is getting 50%. If we create a new one, the program will automatically imagine that you want the artist two done here. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. And we're going to say that one also gets 50%. Now you notice we have on the mechanical, it's showing the zero, zero. That's showing us that we didn't do enough work. We'll get to that though. So now we have two royalty agreements, one for each of the artists, paying 50% of mechanical. And that is uh, how that track is set up. So right here in the measurements is where we have the play length. And let's say that that was a pretty long one, 6 minutes and 21 seconds. Now that should be everything we need to set up that track. We can apply it. And then we can actually make a uh, another track, T2 my track 2. We're going to reuse just one artist on this one. And apply changes to get the royalty agreement. We get the royalty agreement 
for the different track and that this time that artist is going to get 100% of the mechanical on that track now track 2 also needs the mechanical and that was a little shorter song and for both of these tracks I should set it to non-stocking so that we don't deal with the um, because there's going to be digital download it doesn't need to handle the uh, inventory changes so my track 1 is set that way and my track 2 is set that way and now I haven't put the 99 cents on this one and we can verify this other one has the price now we have two tracks now we can create an album A1 my album one and we're not going to put authors here we could for instance uh, maybe your graphic artist uh, gets 10 cents for each album that's sold but we're not going to do that this time so we have a, an album and those are 99 cents a piece two dollars let's say this is a dollar 75 also digital download you can have a mixture of digital downloads and uh, stock warehousing you could have as many warehouses as you wish but the key here now with the album is that it has components it has a component of track one and a component of track two now here we're repeating the track length so you can see if you've missed that and you need to go back and fix it but this one's set up now so that's all it takes let's hit apply changes now you see we have an album and its two tracks you can repeat that for as many tracks as you wish and our tracks are set up like the album is to allow individual sailing um, and that the difference this flag makes is that uh, on your manual order entry that we'll get to whether it shows up in that list so that's all it takes to set up the tracks the albums relate them to each other and have royalty agreements we're done now it's the task the ongoing task of recording sales hopefully you'll be using our import sales report system and importing directly from uh, CD Baby or from uh, iTunes etc but for this example I am going to show manual entry of order see it's the same icon you can go either way and we're going to create an order say that this happens to be to Apple we don't have a customer yet with that name so we're going to create one we can fill in the address there we're going to sell just that album and we're going to sell 10 of them we could also have a discount on the, on the album level and or on each individual line item and so the payment maybe it's already paid direct deposit dashbook will assume it's the full amount but you can edit it now we have the simple order if we wanted to do more detail of having multiple orders or multiple shipments with an order you can do that through advance it has a lot more information but most of the time we can avoid that and just stick with this nice simple that has a, a nice look of an invoice when we close this order we're saying we're done with it and apply changes it calculated the royalty now if we go to the report side instead of looking at each individual section of reports we can just say all reports and royalty detail by author you see that we're getting royalties now that's for that author or artist and here's not surprisingly the same amount for the next one uh, but you notice it's multiple pages too and the uh, that's just showing the total for all the period we also have another royalty report here that will show you know for all your authors here's artist one is getting this amount and artist two is getting this amount you notice artist one has a quantity of 20 on the album on the royalty summary it combines all the tracks and albums and as if it were a single event so because that artist is getting uh, 10 of track 1 and 10 of track 2 it's showing 20 and you can see his overall royalty amount is substantially higher than artist 2 who is only uh, contributing to 1 and that is basically it you can take these uh, royalty agreements and uh, it has the information if we had the address it would be there and you can directly uh, send it as a, uh, an email we can export it or right here we can email the PDF directly to that artist and that's all it takes 
I hope you've enjoyed this session. Thank you.